What is going on, everyone? I hope you guys are having a very blessed and safe Easter Sunday. Also, shout out to Israel Adesanya for winning back his belt last night in a crazy knockout fashion. Today, we are going to be doing a three-round mock draft for the Houston Texans. We are getting closer and closer to this 27. I think we're about 18 or 19 days away. And when it comes to this draft, I am getting nervous and nervous every single second that passes by. I really think the franchise is on the balance here, right? We already know what the Houston Texans have went through the past two years. I'm not going to explain everything. But it feels like the Houston Texans are on the right path, right? With D'Amico Ryans, with ownership, and with the excitement from not only the players, but from the fans, you could see the trajectory of the Houston Texans going up. But when it comes to the number two overall pick, this is where it gets interesting. There are two quarterbacks that can fall to you. Both have now been mentioned in runnings to be the number one quarterback off the board, right? We talked in the video yesterday how one of the uh, veteran NFL insiders said that Bryce Young is a lock pretty much with the Carolina Panthers. This draft is so important for the Houston Texans. And both of these two quarterbacks, I would love if they would start for this team. C.J. Shroud, we haven't really talked about him a lot because we've been on the Bryce Young train. But C.J. Shroud is every bit of a franchise quarterback. Shroud put a stamp on his college tenure in a big way with the second highest graded game of his career against Georgia in the college football playoff. He has the accuracy and anticipation to thrive in the NFL. Where he wins his accuracy, our chart and data would say Stroud is the most accurate quarterback in the class. Although having a lot of open wide receivers can skew that a little, he almost never misses layups and errs on the safe side with misses. What is his role? Pocket passer. Stroud excels over the middle of the field and at the intermediate range. If you want to win from the pocket in the NFL, that is precisely where you need to be able to attack. Where he can improve is poised under pressure. He'll get tried by fire in regards uh, next season as few teams drafting early have a great offensive line. After playing with one of the best O-lines in college football, it will be a far cry from what he's used to. Now, the, the O-line thing doesn't really concern me. The Houston Texans did just that. They made Larry Tunsil the highest paid left tackle. The other tackle, um, Titus Howard, he is entering his contract year. You know he is going to want to ball out. Your two guards, you traded for Shaq Mason, only allowed one sack last year. That is your right guard. You drafted Kenyon Green in the 15th overall pick in last, year graph, uh, sorry, last year's draft. The only hole on this Houston Texans offensive line is center and one that is going to be addressed maybe even early in this round, in this draft. The pros on CJ Stroud, accurate to every level of the football field. Feathery touch does a beautiful job layering balls over the middle of the field. Quick processor from the pocket with anticipation throws littered all over his tape. His cons. Performance under pressure was rough this season, and that is worrisome considering how big his pockets were in 2022. Arm talent is nothing special, and it suffers when he's on the move. Escapability in the pocket is concerned. Doesn't always feel the rush well. C.J. Stroud. You are a Houston Texan. And to just finish it off, let's read the review. Stroud is going to be a fascinating case study as to how much a supporting cast can elevate a quarterback. Over his two seasons as a starter, he had the pleasure of throwing to Gary Wilson, Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jibba, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Emika Ibuka, arguably five first rounders. Still Stroud's 26.7% rate of the perfectly placed passes led all FBS quarterbacks since 2021. His job in the NFL will undoubtedly get harder, but he has the NFL's ready tools as a passer. CJ Stroud, you are a Houston Texan. I hope you even wear number two. And at pick 12, that went very freaking fast. Where do you go here? Now, we talked about 12 in yesterday's video. I myself said that I would want to trade back, get as much more assets to give CJ Stroud every best possible outcome. And also, the edge needs to be addressed as well. But if we are taking a C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, then why not take his partner in crime, who he didn't really play with this season because of a hamstring injury, but Jackson Smith and Jibba and C.J. Stroud. This is your quarterback slash wide receiver combo. JSN missed almost the entire fall with hamstring issues, but was Ohio State's leading receiver in the 2021 as a sophomore. That year, he caught 95 passes for 1,595 yards and nine scores. He provides the uncoachable route running ability and ball skills that will always have a role in the NFL. 
where he wins, he is technically savvy. JSM processes the game like it's in slow motion. His ability to break off routes without warning and catch the ball as he changes direction is unmatched in this class. What is his role slot? He ran 83% of his routes from the slot in his career, where he proved to be a sure-handed receiver who possesses the short area speed to separate from defenders and consistently move the chains. Where he can improve, very little. It's not safe to say that there's nowhere JSN can improve, but rather than the most uh, deficient areas of his skill, said all revolve around purely physical tools, faster, stronger. Nonetheless, JSN might be the best wide receiver in this draft. If you listen to Steve Smith and his podcast, he was talking about how he catches the ball so well that he also takes care of his body when he gets hit. The pros on JSN he gets it. His attention to detail is well beyond his years on sophomore tape. Carries mass and lower half. Won't go down with arm tackles after the catch. Ultra reliable. Kind of receiver. QB's build rapport with Crickly. And what better than someone who he's built it with the past two years in college? I think this will be a great pairing of CJ Stroud and JSN. The cons, lackluster top speed, won't run away from safeties, largely a ground player, limited windows over the middle of the field, not really a jump ball threat, and he played all of 60 snaps in 2022 due to hamstring injuries. This is your first two picks in the first round, and honestly, guys, I really don't think anyone would be upset if the Houston Texans win C.J. Stroud and J.S.N. with 1-12. and 12. Now, at 33 Here's where it gets interesting for the Houston Texans. I've mentioned edge and offensive line are huge. You didn't address neither of these two in free agency. I think what edge is out there, like Yannick Ngakwe and Jadavion Clowney, you could still bring those guys in and they could start immediately. You know, with Yannick Ngakwe, he's a guy that's going to get you eight plus sacks a season. With Jadavion Clowney, if he is healthy, he is dominant in the run game and can give you something in the pass rush but when you're talking about cj stroud or even bryce young for that matter you want them to have the best o-line as possible and honestly there might be a chance that these centers all three of them who are luke whipler joe tipman and john michael schmitz might all be gone by pick 65 that is where it gets huge for the Houston Texans. Now, I will be going center here. I think with Edge, you could still go out there and sign some guys. Now, who is the best center is the question. I think it's John Michael Smith. I don't want to go Ohio State, all three picks. That would absolutely be crazy. But for John Michael Smith, Smith was the single highest graded center in the FBS this past season at a 92.4 overall. He's on the bigger side for the position at six foot four, 320 pounds. Yet he did his best work on the move in an outside zone heavy Minnesota scheme where he wins savvy. With four years of starting experience at center, Schmidt has been a lot. I'm sorry, Schmidt has seen a lot and his show is on tape. He already plays the position how it looks in the NFL. What is his role center? You want someone who sees the game the way Schmidt does in this in the center of the offensive line. What he can improve on adjusting on the fly if there's one knock on smitch's tape that's consistently gets him in trouble it's how aggressively he bursts out of his stance he leaves himself open to get him backdoored a lot a lot more control will help him adjust to that the bottom line schmitz may never be a pro bowler with his physical tools but you're not going to complain about starting him either let's not forget our boy chris myers the pros on john michael smith's stable presence very consistent with footwork and technique exactly what you want at a center Establishes hand placement on the move so well, excelled in the outside zone. Versatile frame for the interior, he could likely pay guard if needed to be. Some of the cons, below average athlete for a center by NFL standards, he will get exposed more at the second level in the NFL. Older prospect, 24 years old as a rookie, but these centers last very long. And Minnesota scheme hit some of his uh, deficiencies in pass protection. The Houston Texans need a center, and I think John Michael Smith is the best out of the three. And if you go quarterback, wide receiver, center, once again, I don't think anyone is going to be upset that the Houston Texans did that. Now, at pick 65, at pick 73, here's where it gets interesting, right? Because we talk about the no edges, right? The only edges here is Andre Carter. What are we going to see from this Houston Texas team? What are the biggest needs? Now, I know the Houston Texans have met with Nathaniel Dell. Uh, Garrett Williams, I do like him. However, he did tear his ACL. But if you want edge help, 
Nick Herbig, I think is a very interesting prospect. The first look on him, Herbig was an edge rusher at Wisconsin, but maybe more of a hybrid NFL player at 240 pounds. Either way, he knows how to rush the passer after earning a 91.1 and a 91.4 such grades the past two seasons. He also looks very smooth when dropping in the coverage. The bottom line, he's a second or third round. Herbiger is such an unknown at this point that it's hard to see a team drafting him with a premium pick. But boy, is he an intriguing athlete. Where he wins is block is block destruction. Herbert knows how to get around blocks. He did so at an elite level against offensive tackles over the past two seasons. What is his role? Off-ball linebacker. He's simply too small to stay on the edge. Even with 15 more pounds of muscle, Herbert will still be struggle with his limited length. What he can improve on is reps. Herbert is such a smooth athlete that there's little doubt he could hold up in coverage in the NFL. That's easier said than done when a guy has never done it before with other zone uh, coverage intels at that level. The analysis, pros, unique take on skills, has a ton of ways to defeat blocks. Change of direction skills when he's asked to drop in coverage were so dang good, ideal for a linebacker, flexible lower half. His cons, no real history as a true off-ball linebacker, played as a 3-4 outside linebacker for Wisconsin, played just 47 snaps in man coverage over his career, undersized with limited wingspan. Let's look at the stats this year. 11 sacks this year, 9 sacks the year before. The dude can get to the quarterback. Herbig is one of the best pass rushing linebackers in the country, plain and simple. He knows how to get to the QB, which was proven well over the last two seasons by his 20 combined sacks and 91 overall pass rushing grade. Herbig played on the edge a lot for Wisconsin, but he is little, I'm sorry, but he is a little undersized to do that in the NFL. Therefore, we expect him to move to full-time outside linebacker where he still had plenty of success for the Badgers. Herbig is, is a strong, well-rounded defender who knows how to track down the ball carrier. He finishes with a terrific 87.4 grade. Houston, Texas need edge. That's exactly where the Houston, Texas should go. And that pick 73, let's look at what we did. We took a quarterback. We took a wide receiver. We took a center. We just took an edge. Are there any linebackers there available with the 73 overall pick? Now, I know the Houston Texans have met with Dorian Williams and DeMarvion Overshawn. Let's look at Dorian Williams, okay? First look. Williams is one of the best coverage linebackers in the class, boasting a six foot eight wingspan and a 4.49 speed. He earned an 87 coverage grade this past fall. What is the bottom line? He's a third rounder. Williams has an interesting coverage skill set worth the kind of length that defensive coordinators can work with. Where he wins is coverage field. Williams is a very adept zone defender with the plus athletic tools to make quarterbacks think twice about throwing his way. He allowed only 161 yards in coverage in 2021. What is his role? Will linebacker. Williams isn't the guy you want taking on fullbacks in the hole anytime soon. He's the one you want cleaning up for that guy. Where he can improve is taking on blocks. William has the one-two in the run game, but his life is difficult at 228 pounds. He has to have more answers to work around blocks. His pros, broad shoulders, more than an 80-inch wingspan, stay square to the line of scrimmage in the run game, uh, love his eyes and coverage, quick to dart between threats. His cons, bounce too easily at the second level by lineman, struggles working off blocks, routinely leaves his feet as a tackle in the open field, not a particularly instinctive run defender who can get by being undersized. The review, Dorian Williams was a big reason for Tulane's success this season. He was great on all three levels of defense, finishing with an 83.3 overall PFF grade to go along with 97 tackles, six sacks, two forced fumbles, two interceptions. It's safe to say that Williams was everywhere on the field this year for the Green Wave. He finished seventh in the entire FBF in total tackles and was one of the best linebackers in coverage as well, giving up only 161 yards while holding opposing QBs to a 67.1 NFL passer rating. This is how I think the the first three rounds should go for the Houston Texans. You get your quarterback, you get your wide receiver, you get your center, and then you get some interesting prospects for the defense at Saturday. Nick Herbig, I think, will be a good edge for them. And then D'Amico Ryans, he gets his linebacker in the third round. He said in his press conference, guys like Fred Warner, who himself was taken in the third round and are now being called the best linebackers in the NFL, he takes pride on that. Let me know what you guys thought about the mock draft. Did you like it? Did you not? Happy Easter. Go Texans. You guys have a very blessed day.